Hi guys, it's Kristen. I am sister number two and today I'm sharing with you some of my Christmas tricks when it comes to planning food on Christmas Day. These are just some of the things that I do to make my life a little bit easier. So the first one is I do click list from Kroger. So it's where you go online and you just order all your items and then you can either go pick it up from the store or they can deliver it to you. The fee to pick up is about $5. The fee to deliver is about 10. And because it's Christmas time, things are wild, I always have them deliver it to me and it is life changing. I'll just show you. Usually when they come in, they put it on the front porch, but today they were so kind they brought it all the way to my kitchen. I just told them to put it on the ground because, uh, you know, it's, it's busy today. <laughs> so next I want to talk about the food. Now, like most people at Christmas, they are with their families and they have big groups. And so these recipes are some easy ones that you can do that can feed a lot of people or actually just feed a few people. So this year I'm by myself, um, this is me and my husband and my four kids, but this works for us and it will work for big groups. So also along with my click list, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna give you my recipes that I'm feeding my family this year from breakfast to lunch to dinner to even the, the dessert after dinner when the kids are kind of getting bored and they want something to do and they want a fun little snack. All right, I am gonna jump right into the recipes. This one is called breakfast enchiladas. One thing I love about this recipe is that you can make it the night before. Okay, here's what's in mine. I have red pepper, some green onions, ham and turkey mixture, I just had some leftovers, and then some mushrooms. And so as long as you have about four cups of your favorite ingredients, vegetables, it'll work. Now, you want two cups of cheese to be put into there also, and then you're just going to mix it all around. Now, as soon as it's mixed really good, you're just gonna set that aside, and we'll get going on our enchiladas. Oh wait, before I forget, you wanna put about one third cup of it aside so that will be your little toppings on top. Then you're gonna get your tortillas, either eight really big ones, I have about 10 small ones that will work. Then you're just gonna spoon about, oh, about a third of a cup to a half a cup in it. You want it to be a little bit bigger and then just roll it up. Make sure it's seam side down in your pan. Then just keep doing this until you're out of mixture or you're out of tortillas. I like to squeeze as many as I possibly can in there, so I have two on the sides also. Then I'm gonna mix together six eggs and two cups of milk. This is whole milk. If you want to be a little healthier, you can go skim milk. Both will work. Then I just added some garlic salt. If you like salt and pepper better, go ahead and use that. Either one works. Then just whisk it all together until it's all combined. Once you're done mixing, you're just going to pour it right over top of your enchiladas. Try and spread it out evenly the best that you can. Then you're going to take about a cup and a half of cheddar cheese. Oh, don't forget your stuff that you put aside. And you're just going to spread that evenly all over your enchiladas. Then once you're done with all your cheese, get to put the toppings on top. I had a little bit of mixture left over, so I just saved it and put it on the top. So if you were making this ahead of time, go ahead and cover it and put it in your fridge up to 24 hours before you're going to bake it. If you're baking it right then, be sure to cover it with foil. You'll bake it at 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. I like to top mine with guacamole, sour cream, salsa, and my kids love to eat it with ketchup. If you have a large group, this recipe can easily be doubled, or if you have a small group, you can easily half this recipe. On to lunchtime, poppy seed sliders. Instead of making every individual sandwich, this makes it so easy, so you just cook it all at once. I highly suggest using King's Hawaiian Roll. So I have half a cup of butter melted, then I'm gonna add one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. After that, one and a half tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Now I know that sounds weird, but I'm telling you with the Dijon, it tastes so good. Then we have one onion. Depending if you like onions, you could do a half onion, but I like 
onions. So we did a whole onion and then you just mix those together. Next you're going to add one and a half tablespoons of poppy seeds. Now this is totally optional. You don't have to add them if you don't want to. Now I like Hawaiian rolls because they're all stuck together. You just cut them right in half and then just put them in your pan. Take the tops off because we're going to put some stuff on the bottom. Now take your onion poppy seed mixture and spread it all around the bottom of your rolls. Now you're going to use all your mixture just on the bottom layer, so make sure you spread it around as evenly as you can. Now I just add my ham on top. So instead of doing each individual sandwich, I literally just put all the ham on top of all the rolls. Now do the same thing with your cheese. It calls for Swiss cheese, but I like provolone and my kids like provolone a lot more. Then you just put your rolls right back on top and your sandwiches are made. So you're gonna cook it at about 325 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Now make sure you cover it with foil before you cook it. When you're done, you just take the foil off, cut those rolls up and serve them. I serve about two per person and then I serve it with like a veggie tray and some cut up apples. Quick, easy, perfect for Christmas lunch. All right, moving on to dinner. These are our cheesy potatoes, also known as funeral potatoes. So you wanna take frozen hash browns, either 32 ounces or 30 ounces, somewhere around there, and dump the whole thing into your nine by 13 pan. Next, I chopped an onion and I just put it in there. Usually I get a bowl and mix it all together, but I'm kind of trying to hurry, so I'm just throwing it in. So I have two cans of cream of chicken soup, and then add two cups of sour cream. It can be light sour cream, normal sour cream, whatever floats your boat. Next, grab some cheddar cheese, and it's about one cup. I don't really measure, I kind of just go by the package and see. Then I'm gonna add a little garlic salt. You can add salt and pepper if you like that better. I like garlic salt. Then carefully, as careful as you can, mix it all together. Then when you're all done, you're just going to even it out, flatten it out so it will cook evenly. Okay, just gonna set that aside. Then I have two tablespoons of melted butter and I have two cups of crushed cornflakes. Now, I do it the cheating way. I kinda like my cornflakes big, so I crush them in my hand and then just mix them a little bit. Now, once those are done mixing, you're just gonna put them right on top of your cheesy potatoes. Um, spread them around the best that you can. Then you're going to cook them at 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. Now, the good thing about this recipe, you can make it three or four days beforehand Put some foil over top, stick it in the freezer. About, oh, 24 hours before you're gonna cook it, pull it out and just cook it normal. Now on to the Christmas ham. And of course, we're making it easy by throwing it in the slow cooker. So first, I'm just gonna measure, make sure it fits in that size of slow cooker. So I know what you're thinking. Ham usually doesn't fit in a slow cooker, but I just wanna show you my trick. So I have two big pieces of foil. I'm putting one on one side, one on the other side. Then I'm putting my ham directly into the slow cooker. It's okay if your lid's not gonna go on, just wait for it. <laughs> the plan is to make a little tent out of the foil so it will cook just like it normally would in a slow cooker. All right, so I have my two pieces I'm putting together, um, fold together a little bit so it's like a little tent. Then I'm gonna take another piece of foil and put it right on top and fold it into the edges, just so it kind of has that nice seal on it. Then you're gonna stick a towel and just put it right over top of your whole slow cooker and cook it for six to eight hours on low. So because I'm gonna make this as easy as possible, I'm actually gonna use the ham glaze that comes with the ham. It really is delicious. So about 30 minutes before it's done cooking or before you're gonna eat it, open it up, um, mix together that little ham glaze. It was a tablespoon of water and that mixture and you just mix it till it's a liquid and then just pour it right on top of the ham. I like to usually try and get it into all the little creases so it will give it a little bit of flavor with each piece of ham. Then just fold your foil back up, secure it the best you can, put your tail back on top and let it cook for another 30 minutes to an hour. Then when you're done just take everything off, put your ham on a plate, cut it up and serve. It really is so easy for Christmas dinner. 
Now, if you want really easy rolls, I would suggest grabbing a bag from the store, but we really like Rolls rolls at my house. So these Rolls Rhodes rolls are thawed, and I'm just spraying a cupcake tin. Then I'm gonna take the roll, and notice my little kid scissors? Yes, I do use those in my kitchen, and I'm cutting the rolls in half. So you're gonna use about one and a half rolls, cut it into thirds, and place all three sections into the muffin tin. Now, there's nothing really special about this recipe other than the fact that it's awesome. Then you're gonna take your plastic wrap and cover your rolls while they rise. Then when they're done rising, just carefully take the plastic wrap off. You're gonna put them in a hot oven at 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. Then when they're done, you have this awesome roll that can split so easily into three pieces. My kids thought they were so fancy. <laughs> Anyways, we love them at our house. Now while your rolls are cooking, throw in the microwave these cheater green beans. They're from the frozen aisle at Kroger. They're French style green beans. You put a little butter in, a little salt and pepper. They're so easy. Now last but not least, our Rudolph dessert. They seriously are so cute. So you want chocolate frosting for your base as Rudolph. Now you can make these on cupcakes, on cookies, on chocolate chip cookies you buy at the store. I did them for my girl's party at school and the kids loved it. Now you're gonna take a, a vanilla wafer, not a mini one, just a normal sized one, two sized pretzels, two little eyeballs that you can get at really any grocery store. Um, and I just put a little bit of chocolate frosting on them so it's like the glue so they'll actually stay on. And then I just got every kid a little packet of M&Ms so they get to keep their M&Ms and they also get to pick what color nose they want on their reindeer or Rudolph or whatever you want to do. Well I hope these recipes help ease the stress a little bit on Christmas Day. If you haven't done so, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out our other food videos. We have plenty of them. Okay guys, thanks for stopping by. See ya!